Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for joining in. Happy San Jordi. Happy day of St. George. Bon Diada de San Jordi to everyone that's joining. I've already left a comment down in the chat to get it going, but everybody that's joining in, please let us know where you're joining from. Thank you for being here on the best day of the year. We're gonna get around, we're gonna walk through the streets of Barcelona, and we are going to do our third annual San Jordi live stream. So I wanna thank everybody for joining in because it is one of my favorite things to do, show you guys around, those of you that can't be in the city for it, show you around to see what this day is all about. So like I said, jump on in that chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Ramon is here. I'm assuming Zoe's there as well. You guys, hello. Yasin is here as well. Hello, hello. We are right now coming in from the Plaza Real. We are in the Plaza Real where we're going to start. And what we're going to basically do is we do every year. We'll start over here, see some of the book stalls that are set up, and then we will get up to the Passage de Gracia, where the biggest stalls and the biggest amount of kind of festivities are going on. And we'll finish up around over there, seeing some of the different events that are going on throughout the city today. You guys, it is April 23rd. San Jordi, it is a Sunday, which means there are a lot of people out. You guys will see it. It's incredible to just imagine how many people are out. Not only tourists that are in the city, but obviously being a Sunday, all the locals are out as well. Everybody enjoying the city and everybody flocking basically to uh, similar areas. You can see all of the people that are around and it is a beautiful day. So it's about 22 degrees Celsius here, so we're about mid 70s or so. Really, really nice day outside. Uh, so it's just like a typical San Jordi accompanying us along the way. So we're gonna get going. We're gonna start walking around. Like I said, we got a lot of ground to cover. You guys can see where we are. All of the bookstalls set up here in the Plaza Real, and we'll talk a little bit about the history of the event, what's going on what you can expect if you ever make it over here. Ira coming in from Detroit, hi, thanks for joining us. You guys, so you can get a better idea of the plaza here. We're gonna flip the camera around and you can see where we are. So like I said, in that Plaza Real, beautiful, beautiful day around and we've got all the book stalls set up over here all of the bookstores publishing houses lots of people out around not only selling the books but authors here that are signing their latest publications or any of those popular ones and we'll get around today, we'll see a bunch of these. And we'll kind of talk about why this is all happening. Thanks, Ian. And thanks for joining in. So we'll take a little lap around the plaza so you guys can get an idea. We don't have maybe some of the bigger bookstores or publishing houses in here but you do have some of the smaller ones. The bigger tend to be over at the Passage de Gracia, where we'll get to. You can see Libros Indy right over there. So a little bit of a smaller one. Daryl, you're right. Everybody that is living here is very lucky for the day. Those of you that don't, lucky to be joining us on the live stream. So you can see, like I said, bunch of different book stalls around, but there is one 
special stall that is here for the first time ever. We'll get over to. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Maybe you visited the store before, but you've got the Lelo bookstore from Porto in Portugal. And they are here for the first time ever. They're not bringing all of their books, but they've got the little prints. And they're selling the little prints, all sorts of editions. And they've got an old one as well. You can see that little prints in the back. You can see some of the older versions here. It says that was published in 1943. It is an incredibly popular book but it's really cool to see that we're getting a little bit more international around here bringing in Lelo which like I said if you guys haven't heard about Lelo before Lelo is a bookstore over in Porto uh, this moving staircases in Harry Potter some of them they say they were they were inspired by that as JK Rowling was over there kind of writing and everything but the bookstore is incredibly incredibly popular it's a beautiful one uh it's even kind of called the most beautiful bookstore in the world and it is a really beautiful staircase that's over there but it's one of those places you have to kind of like reserve to get in it's that popular you have a little bit of a fee to get in it's about four euros last time i was there i think it might have moved up to maybe five now and uh what happens is if you pay to get in obviously if you buy a book, that gets taken off of it. So if you buy a book for 20 euros and you really only have to pay the 16 once you're in because you've already paid those four or five euros. But it's an incredible, incredible place to go and check out. And you always kind of feel like if you're in Porto, you gotta go, you gotta check it out. But it's really cool to see that they're over here for the first time ever. And uh, this guy just tried to thumbs up, but he didn't think I was filming the other way. Thought he was in there. Um, but it's a really cool place to get over to. Ramon, thank you very, very much. Uh, some patatas bravas and cañas. I already had some potatoes today, uh, so I might have to save that, but a caña for sure. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Uh, what we're gonna do, guys, is we are gonna head out of the Plaza Real, like I said. Not as many of the big ones in there, but we're gonna get out of there and we're gonna start heading up La Rambla. Now, La Rambla traditionally is one of the places where you get all of those book stalls, but within the last couple of years, there's not as many around anymore. This year, they do have some back, but what happened after the pandemic to kind of clear things up, because this place would have been packed more than usual, they moved everything over to the Paseo de Gracia, where we're gonna kind of finish up and we'll see all of the big stores and everything that are around there. We'll stroll up La Rambla right now, but you can even kind of see behind me, not really too many bookstores or anything set up like like they used to. But we'll get a little bit of an idea of what it's what it looks like. Now they've opened up even more for this year. So 2023, they're looking this to be the biggest San Jordi ever. And so that's what we're gonna kinda talk about as we as we walk through. But if you guys have questions about the day, questions about Barcelona, as always, throw those comments in the chat, get it moving. Get it cracking, and I'll try to get to those answers for you as we're making our way through the streets here. You can see down leaving that Plaza del Rey, there's really nothing that's going on over here in terms of those books. But when we get up a little bit more, we'll see some of those, some of those stands. What they've done, like they did last year as well, is they've created what they call a super illa, a super block of all the bookstores, the book stands, and basically all of those flower sales as well. As you know, the rose is a big part of this. I'm gonna jump off La Rambla a little and just kind of walk on the side street because there's less people over here. But you guys can kind of get an idea. We got our first book stop right here. You can see behind me. And this is what it used to look like every single year, but it wouldn't just be one, it would be the entirety of 
La Rambla covered with all of these stands, all of these books. And now we've got a little bit less, but like I said, everything is over in that Paseo de Gracia. And what's crazy is the number of people I was walking around this morning. And already in the morning, there were so many people out there. Obviously with the weather getting nicer, there's be even more all around. Cindy, we're walking on La Rambla right now. You can see it's not too dangerous. So I don't think you need to stay away from it. Just understand that if you're here visiting, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people all the time. Not as much as you're gonna see right now, but Barcelona, and I say this in all the videos when people ask, it's not a dangerous city. <laughs> Daryl promoting the, the likes and shares. Yeah, if you guys want other people to be able to join in on the live stream to see what this day looks like, like and share realistically, send it right to them. They can jump in, they can join us and they can see what's going on. This is like I said before, the third year that we are doing the live stream. Third year that we're doing it realistically. In 2021, we started to open back up. Um, we were able to get around, but we we're still wearing masks. People weren't traveling as much, so I really wanted to do a live stream to share my favorite day of the year with everybody that couldn't come in. And then last year, wanted to continue again because I just really love to share it with everybody. So we're doing it again for the third year in a row. For those of you that can't be here, hopefully you get at least the essence, the idea of what uh, San Jordi is here in Barcelona. But you still have those trips coming up. Are you thinking about coming? You know that April 23rd is one of the days that I always recommend to come and kind of have that trip revolving around. And you get some of the days where there's less people, but then you can see everybody that's out here. What do you guys think? Does it look like there's a lot of people? Let me know. You think it looks like there's a lot of people around me? camera so you can see my angle as well like I said we're walking down La Rambla we're on the part that's known as the Rambla dels Flores the flower section so you can see some of the flower shops in one of the big parts of St. George day are all the roses so you see a lot of florists be selling all sorts of roses throughout the day very decorative ones as well. And you've got all sorts of decorations, little additives and everything that you can uh, that you can think of. Yeah, Natalia, there's a lot of people. Obviously, January a little bit less of a busy season, but now getting to the end of April and into May, we're gonna start to see a lot more people around. So if you were here on the Rambla, definitely notice a big difference than what you saw in January. Just so everybody knows where we are, we're just outside of the, the Bocaria basically. Just outside here, we got a stand that I didn't see earlier today. This looks like we've got some books for Juanito at Pinocho. You can see the picture of the guy in the back. He unfortunately passed away a couple weeks ago. He was an icon, an idol here in Barcelona at the Bar Pinocho in the Boqueria. And it looks like they've got a, a book out dedicated to him. But he unfortunately just passed a couple weeks ago. You're right, Ramon, it is beautiful weather. You guys get a look at just everybody walking around on La Rambla here. And IRA's coming soon, but there'll be less people when you when you guys get here. 
still got a bunch of time, but November usually tends to be that time when when uh, things start to die down a little bit. September, October, still big days, months. November, a little bit less. See another florist here. The main flower shops along La Rambla. And all the roses. And what do you guys think? What? Or how many, I should say, how many roses do you think can be sold for San Jordi? Check these out. You can see some here with some snails. The dragon. Javier, where are the book stalls located? Passage de Gracia and La Rambla is where we're going to be walking. There are some others in other parts of the city, but many of them, many of them here. Daryl, I don't think it's going to get up to 24. <laughs> the estimates are not to get anywhere close to that. There will be a lot, but 24 way too high. So let's see what everybody else thinks, what others are guessing. It almost looks like there's that many roses out, but not that many will be sold. Or at least projections aren't, but we'll see what it, what they say afterwards. And yeah, Ramon, if you guys are coming back, let me know. If you want to do a tour, you guys can always reach out. For anybody that's looking to do some things here, you've got my email in the description of all the videos so you can check them out ramon's still a little too high 15 a little too high still but you guys are getting closer so now we're getting up towards the top of La Rambla, a little closer towards Plaza Catalunya. You can see in the distance here, it's a little bit more of those book stalls set up. Ramon cutting it in half and still, still too high. <laughs> Hold it up here so you guys can see just how many people it looks like are on the Rambla. See some more stands as we get a little bit closer. Harmonia taking all the guesses. Still not, still not right. Everybody else, we got more people in here than just two that are guessing. So let me know what you think. We got a bunch of wrong answers. Let's see what the projections are. Check this out. Got a giant rose here.
<laughs> grabbing everybody's attention, trying to sell those roses. Uh, Ian, I don't know if I'll be reading that book. We'll see. I have to do a little bit more research about it. It's the first time I've seen it. Let's see another stall right here. Bunch of books about Barcelona as well and some other things. start to see a lot more of these shops here so not only are the bookstores open but they also usually have different stalls set up some of the bigger places will have multiple stalls all over the city and then some of the smaller maybe just one along the Passage de Gracia or maybe even down here Alibri for example a really nice one They've got a stall just right here on La Rambla, you can see. Yes, Natalia, I'm heading to Plaza Catalunya. And Ramon will get up to Casa Batio so we can see it. Bunch of people up there. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a escape here because, as you can see, lots of people, lots of people right in that center. You guys get the idea of all the books, but we're going to start to make our way, Natalia was just asking, up to the Plaza Catalunya and even up into that Passage de Gracia. So we can get over there and you guys can see where everything everything is as i was mentioning before this is supposed to be the biggest ever they're looking for the biggest output ever not only not only excuse me in the idea of the the number of books the number of roses that they're going to be selling but just the number of stalls in general all right so you guys have an idea we've had some guesses but it doesn't look like anybody's gotten it right and now ramon and ira you guys are too low so they're supposed to be projected 6 million roses sold today. And that's 6 million roses. Just want to get you guys to be able to see the stall that's right back here. You can see all of those people over there. Checking out all the books and everything. Uh, like I was saying, 16 or 6 million roses projected to be sold throughout the day. You guys have to think that the population and this is not just Barcelona, right? We're talking Catalonia, but this is a population of about 7.5 million in Catalonia. And 
and six million roses being sold. That's a lot, a lot of roses. Now the roses can be sold for for euros, something like this, but you might get some more elaborate kind of decorations and roses where you can start to spend 20, 30, 50 euros. Last year I spent 50 euros on my rose, but it was a rose that was never going to die. It was in a really cool glass case. And uh, that's a rose that can be basically used every single year. So it was really, really cool to, uh, to get and they have a lot of them being sold this year as well. Try to get over into the Plaza Catalunya from where we are now at the very top of La Rambla. This year I had I got another rose that was I spent 18 euros. But what was really cool is that it was a rose and it also had a wooden castle added on to it. So once the rose unfortunately uh, you know fades away, we'll still have that castle to go on with it. Thanks, Esther. It's good to see you again joining in. And yeah, a lot busier, a lot busier than uh, than November. You guys can see crossing the street. We're going to get over to that Plaza Catalunya and get an idea yeah. Yeah. of what's going on kind of in that boundary between the old and the new city. It looks like some of the TV stations and everything are set up right here. So once we can get on through, we'll get on over. Most of the streets are cut off today in the very center. So the traffic has changed quite a bit. Kind of cut off behind me, the police. And then a lot of Pase de Gracia completely cut off. But some of those cross streets are still allowed to go through. You guys can see TV behind me here, Catalan production and RTVE back there, station number one. And on the other side, you've got that Plaza Catalunya. Sergi, of course, of course. Like I said before, maybe you missed it, but it's one of my favorite things to be able to share with you guys that can't be over here. This incredible, incredible day. Like I said, my favorite day of the year. It's just books. It's it's roses and everything. I left the link for everybody at the very beginning of the chat. And there should be one in the description below as well. But there's a link directly to the video that kind of describes what this day is all about. But just so those of you that are joining understand why this is such a big day. What actually we're celebrating. What's going on here and kind of how it got to this magnitude, the biggest ever. This is the day that is based on the legend of St. George. St. George is the patron saint of all of Catalonia. So he is a patron saint in many different places. And if you come over to Barcelona, even in the shield, you've got that cross of St. George right in the flag. Uh, so you'll see kind of images of him all around. Now, the legend of St. George, for those of you that don't know it, is that he kills a dragon. By killing that dragon, he saves the princess who was about to be eaten by that dragon. Who this dragon had been terrorizing the kingdom, had been terrorizing the countryside, had been killing a lot of people. The princess, when she was taken, St. George saves her by stabbing that dragon with a lance when he saves that princess takes out a rose from the dragon's blood that had appeared. He gives it to the princess. And even basically since like the Middle Ages, right, this legend is always told to have been said in Mont Blanc in Tarragona, which is about an hour south of where we are right now. Basically what happens is even since those Middle Ages, they've been kind of celebrating with this rose. What a lot of people call it today is like a Cat Catalan lover's day. It's like a Valentine's day basically. So it is a day of love and that's why you see all of the different roses all around. That's part one and that's kind of what gets to be the big celebration but it started to get even bigger to the point that it is today much more recently. All right? Now the book doesn't get introduced until 1926 basically. The idea was thought up to basically sell a little bit more books in the Spanish language back in the 20s they were going to do a special day for, for books just in general. 
and it's each of those days basically what you would get is a discount on those books now that happened back like i said 1926 things didn't really kick off as they hoped they had originally started it if i'm not wrong on october the 7th and october the 7th is a little bit too close to the start of the school year so with people spending a lot of money on different books and textbooks mostly for the school year not many people were really going in and they were not buying many of these spanish language books so they started to look around for a different date they were looking around for something that might be a little bit nicer away from the beginning of the school year nicer weather as well and they thought it would be a great idea to start selling them on april 23rd as well again with that 10 percent discount so even today you'll still get a 10 percent discount on a lot of the books that you're buying now what happened is they didn't do this until 1931 that was the first year that they started to sell the books and the roses so hey let's take advantage of the day of saint george let's make it the books day as well but what happened and this wasn't planned but about a week before they had proclaimed the Republic for Catalonia. When they were proclaimed the Republic for Catalonia, there was just this amazing energy in the city. And with this amazing energy, you got to see a lot of kind of pride in Catalonia. So you saw a lot of Catalan flags. And what it became was kind of the day of the Catalan flag as well. So what you see are roses, you see books, and you see those Catalan flags everywhere. So if anybody sees those four bars, those red bars on the yellow background, that's that Catalan flag. And so all of these things tied together have made it kind of what it is today. This really, really fun day to get around and check out. Now, apart from that, this isn't going to happen until the 90s, but UNESCO made this World Book Day. So not only are we celebrating over here, but technically all around the world. You can see there's so many people walking, they're blocking the cars. Basically, what happens is that all around the world, you have World Book Day, but it's also World Authors' Rights Day. So what you get are a lot of authors that come in, not only publishing their books around this day, but a lot of authors, not just from here, but international authors as well, will come in and do a lot of book signings. So throughout the day, we got people buying those books, getting them signed, and then realistically, you see a lot of long lines in the area that we are now. So that long story I just told everybody got us through the Plaza Catalunya. We left it behind back over there and where we are right now, the Passage de Gracia. You can see the Passage, everything back there, because that's where all the books are. So like I said, after the pandemic, kind of looking to open up and get a little bit more space, what they did is they moved everything from that old city where it was so, so packed. It's still packed over here, but there is more space. They moved everything over here to what they call these super guillas, these super blocks. And the super block is basically from this Plaza Catalunya all the way up to Diagonal. On this street, we've got all the books. The next street over, we've got basically all the roses and flowers and everything being sold. And it's this whole area where basically all the traffic has been cut off except for some cross streets that are coming through. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of pedestrian and, and places to walk around. But you can see all the people that are around here. And what I'll do again is flip the camera around so that you guys can see from the front, from my point of view. Like I said, just so much more going on over here. And this is where all the big editorials, all the big publishing houses and all the big bookstores are going to be. Ian, if you're looking for a book on the Spanish Civil War in English, your best bet is going to be to look at anything by Paul Preston. He is kind of English on the Spanish Civil War. I don't know if it cut out right there, but you guys didn't think there's a lot of people around, so I'm hoping the uh, internet holds up for me here. But Paul Preston for anything on the Spanish Civil War in English. He's got a lot of books. You can just look up his bibliography and you've got basically everything that you need from just overall history to something very, very, very detailed and niche or niche, whichever one you want to call it. What do you guys call it? Niche or niche? You can see some used books as well.
So you'll have not only old and used books, but obviously a lot of the newer ones. There's some more. And I kind of continue that, Ian, with your question. Any books you're looking for in English, my recommendation is always to go to the bookstore, Come In English Bookstore. They've got a stand over here, just up the street, but they've also got their shop over on Balmes and Rosselló. But come in English bookshop. I think they also have one in Palma de Mallorca. <laughs> Diane, hello. Thanks for joining us from Pennsylvania. So hopefully those of you that heard the legend, heard kind of the history, the backstory for the day, that makes a lot more sense now. But let me know what other questions you have. What kind of things do you want to see from this day? Any other questions that you have? Sergi, that's one of them. But like I said, he's got probably more than 20 at this point. Some of them originally, I think now written in, in Spanish, but there's a lot, there's a whole lot in his bibliography. But that would be one of them. See here some authors signing their books. See here, they've got kind of a waiting line to get over to some of the authors that are signing. So you get a little bit of a wait list to get to some of your favorite authors as well. Let's see who's signing right now. Between four and five. quite a few. There's about five authors over at Valle Bookstop, which is another great one if you guys are looking for all sorts of books. Ramon, if you're looking for a book in the history of Spain, again, that's a long list of different things, but in Spanish, can't think of an author off the top of my head, but you get things like Breve Historia de España. That might be one place to start. Even though it's a short history, it's not too short. Got that one at home, it's probably about a thousand pages or so. But considering all the years they have, it's short for their history. And Sergi, yeah, it is possible to get into the metro. I've already taken it a couple times today just to get around. was over at the Sagrada Familia earlier today. They were doing some human towers. So I got into the metro, the train. They're busy as well, but you can still get into them. Jamie, good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Give you guys an idea. 
very popular intersection here. And even just getting across the street becomes an activity. Yeah, so Sergio, with all the traffic being stopped and everything, they recommend you take public transportation or walk. So they're definitely not closing those metros. But I'd say probably you can tell many people are, are avoiding it. But also one little tip for anybody coming in, the Passage de Gracia Metro is one of the worst changes and it kind of transfers between metro lines. So a lot of people, I avoid it if I can. Exactly, Ramon Cortazar. That would be a good one for the history of Spain. A little bit of everything for you. Yeah, Jamie, there's stalls everywhere, but we're just going to be going to the main to the main sections, Plaza Real, the Rambla, and then over here on the Passage de Gracia. So you can see it's not just florists that are selling roses as well. Like I said, with so many being sold, you can really see that a lot of people will just buy them to sell to sell on their own. A lot of times you need a, a, a license to be able to do that. They kind of control those prices. Do they really? Espanol has a stall with blue roses. Yeah, I imagine they'd have blue ones, blue and white probably. Uh, but do you know where that is? Here's another really nice bookshop here in the city. You can check out Alter. See, it's a pretty popular one. Get off onto one of the side streets here so you can kind of see the idea. Yeah, Jimmy, that's where we are, but <laughs> I can't look it up right now. Maybe we'll see it as we move along. Looks like there's a bunch of people over here. Someone a little bit more famous might be signing some books. We've also got a Bacchus, which is a very, very popular shop. Ah, uh, yeah. So you guys probably can't see from here. I'll hold it up. But Xavier Bosch is signing. And that's going to be a big, a big draw. He's got one of the bigger books they think that's going to sell this year. And there's quite a few other authors. People are in line. You get to meet your author, get a book signed. Not too bad. Like I said, we'll cut on down one of these side streets so you can get an idea for what they've done. They've kind of cut off the street here as well. And you've got some other 
stall set up. And like I said, it's not always gonna be the big bookstores. You got a bunch of other things as well. This looks like it's the Architect Cooperative. So have a little bit more maybe architecture and different things. It looks like there's just regular books as well. Jamie, are you an Espanol fan after all your time here in the city? You're very welcome, Ramon. I hope you use the, uh, <laughs> the affiliate link. <laughs> Probably should have added that into the description for this video as well. You guys have the Fundacio Juan Miro, Juan Miro Foundation, so a little bit more artwork. You guys can see a lot of the books here. One really, really interesting one would be La Masia, and that was a painting by uh, Miro that, that Hemingway actually bought while they were over in Paris. So that book would probably be a really interesting one as well. <laughs> Thanks, Ramon. Thank you for the sticker there. Jamie, maybe more Espanol than Barca. One of the few. One of the <laughs> You guys can see Alibri one more time. You can see little discounts and things as well. If you spend more than 35 euros, you get one of their bags. You can see the author signings right there. the Egyptian Museum. Hey Zoe, thanks for joining in as well. Thought you were there earlier, but thanks for coming in. So what we did, we jumped off of the Passage de Gracia. Now we're going to go up a little bit the Rambla de Catalunya. We'll see some other side streets as well. Give you guys an idea. More over here, it's a lot of restaurants, so it'll be a really nice time or place to come over and, and grab something to eat. But you get a lot more of the roses. Maybe more of flowers over here. So over on uh, Rambla de Catalunya, not to be confused with La Rambla, but down the way they would connect almost, past the Libro, or name the Casa del Gibra. So they've always got some big stalls and everything. Waving hello. You can see here what I was mentioning before that 10% discount that they offer throughout the day. This really kind of extends on to, to other days as well.
things. They have the bookstore, the main entrance there behind me, but they've got a stall just out on the outside. always a nice street to walk down. You've got the cars on the side, you've got the main Rambla in the very center. You can sit down, have a drink, something to eat. What we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to turn on to Conseil de Saint. And this is a street that's just right near the Casa Batio. It's one that they're redoing completely pedestrian. So it looks really, really nice, kind of eliminating cars in the very center of the city is one of the things that the city is really trying to promote in these last couple of years. And this whole street, you can kind of see behind me right now, is turning into a pedestrian walkway. So I'll flip the camera back over so you can actually see it. And it looks really, really good. You know, a little bit more of those trees in here. And then the pavement, you can see no street anymore. It's all that tiling that you'll find all over Barcelona. But what's really cool is that it's just 100% you know, pedestrian. And then for the shops, it's always really nice. Kind of gives a little bit more of that community feel. But I want to know what you guys think as well. What do you think? If you've been to Barcelona, maybe walk down this street. What do you think of the changes? that you can see right here. How's the street looking? Some now more benches to sit, little seating areas and chairs. What do you guys think? I think it, it's looking real, real nice for us here. Yeah, Jamie, the plan is to do it to more streets. This is really the first one that they're doing, but there's a lot of work going on all over the city. The Via Laetana also has a bunch of construction. It's not going to be done like this. You'll still be able to drive, but they're doing this with quite a few places. This is just the big first project. Let's see where we came from there. And now we're back on Passage de Gracia for you guys. And in a minute, we're going to see one of the best things about the entirety of the day. If you don't already know, you didn't see the thumbnail. That was actually a picture from last year. But the Casa Batio gets completely dressed up for the occasion. A little sneak peek in the distance. You can see the red roses on the facade. But obviously, this is where the most amount of people are going to be. Because it is, like I said, one of the best things about it. They get all dressed up, get really excited about the entire legend. And with a house that explains the legend, you got to be excited for the day. Let's see where we can get around here. Of course, Ramon. You and Zoe have a good day. Thanks for joining in. You 
guys can see the, the decorations a little bit more now. Ian, you got to bear with me here, man. There's a lot of people around. So we'll try to make our way through. So you guys can see everybody that's around. Try to get to a little bit better spot. You can see the full facade there. Hi, Chris. Just a just a few days around the twenty third here. Try to back up, get a better view. Hard to see with the tree now, but what you guys have are all of the roses that are covering up what the balconies usually are, which are the victims of the dragon have the full house what you get all the way at the top is the dead dragon's back scales of those dragons it's a really cool roof top up there and then you get the lance of saint george which is that cross on the left kills that dragon it's a legend that we were talking about earlier and then out of the dragon's blood comes all these roses he takes one and gives it to the princess You can see it, and even today, it's open. There are people visiting. So I hope you guys got a good view up close because we're going to head across the street. Get out of here. We got some pictures and videos this morning. But there are a lot of people out here. Thanks, Jamie. Rambla de Catalunya. Gotcha. Didn't see it when I was there earlier. Get into the crosswalk here so you guys can see from a different angle. The whole street cut off. So we got some space. Hopefully you guys can still see that. There you go. 
one of the greatest things we've got going on all day. What do you guys think of the house? What do you think of the decorations? Final views before we get across the street. Here we go. See, the police are doing their job controlling that traffic. <laughs> if you're overwhelmed sitting back at home, imagine me walking around. My girlfriend and I were walking around earlier and she took off because there were so many people around. It's nice for a while, but it does get a little bit agobiante. It's a little overwhelming. But I will tell you guys that the weather is on point. a new stand right here that I hadn't seen before. We got some interesting books. Walter Benjamin, Baudelet. This is the Flaneur. An awesome concept of just walking around for no reason at all. Appreciate that, Ian. Long lines to get into store there.
is surprising because they got the stalls just right out here, but it's hard to get into those as well. Look at all of that. It's all one bookstore. Chris, thank you very much. I might have to stop and have one of those vermouths, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Also love how we can use the whiskey emoji for vermouth. Comes in very handy over here. And I don't know if you guys have tried this, probably not, but if you type in to your phone, automatically the emoji of a rose in a book show up if you type in Sant Jordi, which is kind of cool. Type that in, you'll get the option to just change it to a rose or a book right away. I'm gonna get across the street here while they've opened it all up. Moving us through. So those of you just joining in right now, we are on the Passage de Gracia. This is the big artery in the city that connects the old through to what was the old villa or village of Gracia. <laughs> Daryl, I love those good memories. That one will stick with you. Jamie, there's a, uh, there's your bookstore right there. Caimis, <laughs> but that's a French one. So you can see we got Caimis French, we got Vienna editions. People saying hello to you guys. Hello. Vienna Editions has some nice covers you can see hanging in there. So if you're not following me over on Instagram, I had a post this morning of the book I'm reading today, or that I was reading. It's called En Guerra, During War, basically. It's all about Barcelona, Football Club Barcelona, during the Spanish Civil War. It's kind of like a historical fiction novel, a lot of history in there, but it's a really interesting one. And the author, Enrique Calpena, is signing books somewhere around here pretty soon. But he's a very popular author. This book's in Catalan. A lot of times he has he has them published in both, obviously. Take a look here to see some of these. Books that are on sale here. Guys, this is really cool. You've got some really good books here that let you learn a lot about Barcelona. Estoy haciendo un live. He aprendido mucho de, de los libros. Muchas gracias. Eh? So you can see, I've read some of these here. We've got a bunch of different volumes, a lot of secrets. You can see it's Barcelona Secreta, Secret Barcelona. So there's a lot of really good stuff for those little details all around Barcelona. So that's really cool to see right here. And we got the author in the house. Gracias.
You're welcome, Natalia. Thank you, Daryl. And yes, Jamie, next year, it looks like you've you've been in almost every month. So you gotta be here during St. George Day. It's one of one of the things to see. See, they always have some. That they use a little bit more publicity for and things. A lot of people will, you know, publish their books around this date or, or really use this to push them. And then they take a, uh, you know, a nice uh, idea of, of kind of what's been sold number wise and everything. They always compare the top books in Spanish, the top books in Catalan, see how they do what sold more, what sold less. Obviously there's more books published in the Spanish language than, uh, than Catalan, but that's also just kind of numbers in general. Daryl, one of the first places I got a book when I was out here, was I used to go to this store, it used to be open in the Gothic Quarter, Documenta, but this is where I was recommended after having read, if no one, if you guys haven't read Shadow of the Wind, that's the one book I always recommend. But this is where I got, that documenta is where I was recommended, this is years ago, to read Eduardo Mendoza. And he's got a book that's called uh, Ciudad de los Prodigios, which is the city of marvels. And it's all about Barcelona kind of between 1888 and 1929, those world fairs, which is really cool to see. It's kind of growth of the city during that time, and it's a really, really good one. You guys can see it's gonna continue like this. all up and down the streets. So are there any other questions about the day? Maybe even just about Barcelona? Getting up to 31 people, that's really cool to see. Those of you joining me. We're coming up to now is the Casa Mila. So that other house by Gaudí, not as decorated as the Casa Baccio that we saw before, but we do have the big Catalan flag on it. And no, 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 restaurants are not closed. Restaurants are definitely going to be open today. These are big. Look at all these people around. You can't close the restaurants with everybody here. This is prime time. You had to make reservations before going over. So all these places are just packed. And if you hadn't made those reservations, good luck getting to a place. As you can see, La Casa Mila. And that Catalan flag we mentioned before, that forms part of the day. The street technically wasn't closed all the way. Still a few cars that could go through. But you can see Gaudi's other big creation here. It's 
Sí, Natalia, sí. Todo el día. See, we got Lai again. And this you guys can see. I can get a little closer. The signings at six o'clock. We've got the author that I mentioned, Calpena, who's going to be signing. Hi, Jenny. Hope it's bringing back some good memories. As you can see, all along the stalls here, they've got the pictures of the authors that are going to be here. You've also got the editorial for the publishing house from Montserrat. It's one of the things that they've had at that very famous monastery. They had their first printing press, basically, back in about 1499. They still have those books that they're publishing. A lot of them are for kids, and then there's some historical ones and a lot about the monastery as well. <laughs> so we've made it up basically to the top of the Passage de Gracia. Hopefully you guys have seen a little bit more of kind of what Barcelona is like on this day. Absolutely incredible, amazing, so much fun to kind of get around and with days like this, you couldn't ask for any more. Uh, we'll kind of start to wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions or last minute kind of things, I'll try to answer all of those. There's really not too many restaurants or anything to sit down around here. Let's see if I can just sit down somewhere real quick and answer kind of any of those last minute questions. Help you guys out. It's kind of planning for trips to Barcelona. I'm just going to sit along this, this beam here. Hopefully that'll be all right for everybody. You can see all the books behind me as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Anything that you just want to say before we get before we get going. And I want to know what you guys thought of San Jordi. What you guys thought of the Diada. What you thought of this incredible, incredible day. Uh, Sergi, not maybe as many in the, in the parks. The, the kind of settings are around these main places where we went and then some others in some smaller places. Parks might be a little bit more vacant. You can see just kind of like everyone's coming over, but there's also like film festivals going on, some different talks and things, but they're not going to set up the books uh, in as many of those of those places. Now, oh, thanks, Jamie. I'm glad you got you could make it. Glad you could make it to this one. And uh, you know you'll have to come for the for the next year. No, Ira, we're not at all. It's just up the way, not too far. So you can see you're in a very central location, like I told you. Uh, a good one to get, you know, kind of where you need to go. You got a bunch of metros and everything all around. All right, well over that one hour mark. It's been an hour. Real. Got a good workout in. Hopefully you guys saw what you wanted to. You got an idea for what's going on today. Thank you especially to Ramon. Thank you to Chris for or Chris uh, for all of those donations, those 
super thanks and everything. Remember, if you guys want to support the channel and help me do more live streams like this, make more of that content to help you get better prepared for Barcelona, all of those super thanks, or even a buy me a coffee link down below. Those things are always really, really appreciated. And thank you guys a lot for it. It helps going towards not only the creation of the content, but also getting different gear and things like the gimbal I'm using today. But hopefully now you have a better idea of what's going on here. Got some more videos that are coming out. Watch the video all about what St. George is celebrated here in Barcelona for if you want to get an idea of the history of the event. New summer video just came out. June coming out soon. And I'll catch you guys in the next live stream. Thanks a lot. Bon dia. Bon diada.